Blending old school horror and modern day concepts and graphics, the Callisto Protocol is a diamond in the rough, blending unique story mechanics and chapter by chapter pacing. A new type of horror is emerging. Gone are the days of the cheesy jump scare and in with a new, more thoughtful approach to horror, one that will task the players with a more mentally challenging approach to gaming. What's going on, you guys? It's your Huggable Hipster here, and welcome to my review of the Callisto Protocol. I had so much fun playing this game on YouTube. It was such a blast being able to, you know, squanch everything, being able to see all the story bits, seeing the, just the gameplay capabilities that this thing has. Now, at first, I was skeptical. Just like many of you, I was not a fan of the controls. I wasn't a fan of the way you couldn't even go back and visit different places you needed to get certain items for a platinum. I was really skeptical about how a lot of it was done. But the more the game picked up and the more I got so immersed into the game with the story, the more I saw, okay, this is this is a diamond in the rough. This is something that is really, really cool. Horror never looks so good in 2023. Changing up the game, no pun intended, and giving gamers a new style of horror to really sink their teeth into is a challenge that, well, in this instance, created confusion and unfriendly chaos amongst the masses. Gamers have seen a lot of horror games over the years and, as a result, have become desensitized to it, which creates this want and need for the envelope to be pushed further by developers. The Callisto Protocol created a minimalistic approach to horror with its immersive and creepy atmosphere and truly eagerly done sound design. This game brought back horror in a revitalized way, refreshing concepts that we saw back in the early 2000s. Minimal health items scattered around, tricky bosses and save points that made you work for achievements, and also randomly generated health items or items in general that enemies would just drop. A lot of classic concepts we know and love were being incorporated, but they are incorporated in a fresh new way. A lot of this stuff even just reminded me purely of Resident Evil 1 Remake. A lot of the eerily done vibes, a lot of the music, a lot of the tension and, and buildup that you felt within this game was palpable. And it made me think that, okay, this game is doing horror in such a unique way of where you actually have to work for it. Making a great horror game is like baking. Each part of the game has to have equal parts of everything that make a horror game important to the player. This game does something new and innovative, where it takes new approaches to storytelling, with multiple plot lines interwoven seamlessly into one. Now, you're probably thinking, well, Ariel, other games do that, so what's so special about this one? Other games don't carry on multiple plot lines this seamlessly without hiccups along the way, which is perfectly fine. Having multiple narratives are difficult to pull off successfully and subtly in a way that the player doesn't notice the break in the plot. The base of the story is quite simple on the surface. It just simply looks like a guy who was in the wrong place at the wrong time now has to escape from Black Iron Prison and understand what the hell is happening. During the progress of the story, players find out that Jacob is one of the people behind the transport and is complicit in the outbreak. Jacob's survivor guild, seeing Max at pivotal points throughout the game, it all ties in beautifully into what we find out about Jacob's character and the story itself. Vera Solitarius is another one, the lone man, where we find out that Jacob is our lone man. So there are a lot of varying plot lines that effortlessly weave into one another and create a better sense of immersion, or at least that's what it did for me. There's so many different things that we can just bite into with this story. There's so many different pieces and parts of the puzzle that once you see them all laid out through the audio logs and through the characters and through Danny, through Max, through, uh, you know, different people, through the doctor, it makes more sense. Now, while the story is the clear winner here, I do have some issues with the game. The controls are, have such a learning curve. My goodness. When, <laughs> it wasn't probably until almost practically the end of the game that I really got a hang of them. The mechanics are mostly dodging and hitting, but are set in a confusing way that it made me feel like I was taking part in demon boxing. We float like a butterfly and we sting like a zombie. The writing prompts for the instructions that are given are just slightly confusing and they come up right before you're supposed to fight said monsters. So it took me out of the immersion a little and it had me slightly annoyed. The controls, once you get used to them, you will be dodging and swinging hooks with the best of them. But don't get discouraged if you can't nail the combat right away. In addition to the controls taking a while to get adjusted to, the save mechanic lacks desirability. I'm not a fan of when I try to save the game after I've had my upgrades to my weapons, and then if I die, which is a lot, <laughs> the upgrades didn't save. So I just was going right back to where my original checkpoint was, always having to redo any upgrades that I had gotten previously. 
wanting the, to have the envelope pushed, it really depends on how players are going to receive it. I feel like with this game, this was such a unique experience and, uh, you know, not just with the story, but with the controls, I feel like everything all rolled up into one. It was very unique. It was very sound. It was well put together. And at first I was really hesitant if I was going to like it because Jacob really didn't have a story when I first went into the game. It didn't appear like he was really anyone. It almost felt like he was a Nemo. He had no name, you know? So whenever I see his story now in retrospect, I'm like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, no, it makes sense. It makes sense. You had to really pay attention to all the subtleties that created the magnetism that brought this game to life and how each plotline, cutscene, and audio log interact with one another. And it's just this beautiful recipe that all formally cohesed with one another. And I feel like this game is going to be something that people will look back on as, I think, a more solid experiment in the horror franchise. Because while people like to compare it to Dead Space, this is nothing like Dead Space. But you guys, that was it for today's review. I also added a little more to my outro. Probably thinking, Ariel, what more could you add? But if you watched my Soulsborne Academy video that I released yesterday, you would know. So if you guys like my face and what I do, please be sure to subscribe. Hit the bell down below because I make videos every day here on YouTube. May you find your worth in the waking world, you hunter. Stay casually nerdy and I will see you all in the next video. Umbasa. There, see, there was. There, yeah. Bye, guys. <laughs>